Welcome to this episode on using protocol buffers or protobuf with Golang. In this video, we'll walk you through how to install protobuf, define your protobuf messages, generate Go code, and use that code in a real world Go application. Before we dive into coding, you might be wondering why use protobuf when we already have JSON? JSON is a widely used data format, especially for web APIs, so what makes protobuf a better choice in some cases? Here are a few reasons why protobuf might be preferred over JSON. Efficiency. Protobuf messages are more compact than JSON. They use a binary format, which means they require less space and can be transmitted faster. This efficiency is particularly valuable in systems where bandwidth or storage is limited or when dealing with large amounts of data. Speed. Protobuf is faster than JSON for both serialization and deserialization. This is because Protobuf uses a binary format, which is much quicker for machines to process compared to the human readable text format of JSON. Schema and type safety. Protobuf requires you to define a schema using dot proto files, which provides a strong type system. This ensures that data conforms to a specific structure, reducing the risk of errors due to missing or incorrectly typed fields. Forward and backward compatibility. Protobuf makes it easier to evolve your data structures over time. You can add new fields to your messages without breaking existing code, which is great for maintaining backward compatibility in large distributed systems. While JSON is great for human readability and quick prototyping, Protobuf excels in scenarios where performance and efficiency are critical, especially in microservices, mobile applications, or any environment where bandwidth is a constraint. Before we start, make sure you have Golang and the Protobuf compiler, Protoc, installed on your system. Let's get started. This command installs the Protobuf package. Next, we need to install the Go plugin for Protobuf by running this command. This plugin will be used to generate Go code from our Protobuf definitions. Now let's look at the definition of Protobuf message. We created a new directory, models to hold our bot proto files. In this file, we define messages. A message is converted to the struct when we compile it using Protobuf compiler. Here we define a simple person message. It has these fields, name which is a string and with identifier 1. Similarly, id is an integer of 32-bit and is assigned 2 as the identifier. Then comes the email. This field refers to another message. Repeated keyword means this is a list of items. Phone number is another message that is defined here. Phone number message has two fields, number and type. Phone type is defined as an enum. Here mobile is given the identifier 0, home is 1 and work is 2. In the beginning of the proto file we specify the syntax. Next, we need to provide the Go package name. This is the project name, and this is the directory in which we specify the proto files. With our dot proto file ready, it's time to generate the Go code. Run this command in the terminal to generate the file. This is the protocol buffers compiler. It's a tool provided that reads our dot proto files and generates code. The Go out flag tells the compiler to generate Go code and specifies where to place the generated files. The dot here indicates that we want to output the files right here in the current directory. This option controls how the paths for the generated files are handled. By setting paths as source relative, we're telling the compiler to maintain the relative directory structure of our proto files when generating Go files. Finally, the path to the proto file we want to compile. This command generates a Go file that corresponds to our protobuf definition. 
we can find the generated file named person.pb.go in the models directory. This is where phone type is defined. These are the different phone types. Let's scroll down. Here is the definition of the phone number structure. The fields are defined here. This field is of type phone type. This is the definition of the person structure. Fields are specified here. The protobuf tag specifies the protobuf related details like the type, identifier and other options. We will demonstrate the usage of protobuf with net http APIs. Let's have a look at the overall structure of the app. We are going to implement these two APIs. This API add will add a person to this hash map. The get API will retrieve the person with the specific ID. The handler will look into the hash map and return the user if present. The add API will accept protobuf and the get API will respond with the person in protobuf format. The handlers are defined in this file itself. Let's begin by implementing the add person handler. Here we read the body. The body is in the protobuf format. If there is an error in reading the body, we send bad request error code. Then we defer the closure of the response body. This closes the body once we are done. Now we create a person variable. We will use this to unmarshal the protobuf. Let's unmarshal the body with proto.unmarshal function. We pass the body and the address to the object to hold the unmarshaled data. This function returns an error. Let's handle the error. Now, we will add the person to this map. Persons of person ID is equal to person. At the end, we add this text to the writer. Now let's implement the getPerson handler. This is the handler for this API. We begin by retrieving the ID passed in the URL parameter. If the ID is not passed, we return bad request to the user. Now, we need to convert this retrieved ID, which is a string to integer of 32-bit, to match the person's map key type. First, it is converted to an integer. In case there is an error, we return back from here. Then, it is converted to a 32-bit integer value. Now we retrieve the person using the ID. If there is no person matching the ID, we return 404. Else, we marshal the retrieved person into protobuf format. This returns the protobuf data and error. Let's handle the error here as well. Now, set the response content type header to octet stream.
Next, write the marshal data to the writer. We have the server ready. To test the server, we'll use curl to send requests to our endpoints. First, we create a person object in Go and serialize it using protobuf. We will store it in a file. For such files, we create a new temporary directory here. To support curl requests, we have create Hepler programs to marshal the unmarshal the data sent to the API and received from the API. Let's have a look. This is the person we want to add to the HTTP server. Here we marshal the person. We store the person in protobuf format in this file. Similarly, we have this helper program to unmarshal the protobuf data. This program reads this file. Then unmarshals the data. At the end, it prints the retrieved person. Now let's run the code. First, we will marshal the person object that we will send to the HTTP server. This creates person.bin file in the temporary folder. Let's run the server now. Now, we will send the person to the HTTP server. This is a POST API. We send binary data from this file that we just created. This is the endpoint. Let's send the request. Response from the server has the person that was added. Now we will get the same person back with this request. This is the API and this is the ID passed as the parameter. The output is stored in this file. Let's see if the file is there. Yes, it is present. Now. We will unmarshal the received data to see if we got the person correctly. We can see here the deserialized person is correctly printed. And that's it. You've learned how to use protobuf with Golang, from defining a message to generating and using the corresponding Go code. This is essential for building efficient, scalable systems, especially when dealing with microservices or data storage. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Golang tutorials. See you in the next episode.